What's up guys and welcome back to Tech Plant. Let's take a look at the grow room. It's been a while since we've done a big tour and there's a lot going on. So let's check it out. Take a good look at this grow room because right now it is probably the cleanest it's ever been. I did a lot of work cleaning this place up. I was filming everything, but the problem was I was trying to do like a live recording with the mic like I am doing now, but there was a lot of like audio clipping and it just became, um, it sounded so awful that I just decided to scrap the whole thing and just focus on actually getting things clean. And that's what I did. So now we have a good opportunity to actually go through this entire grow room. I can show you sort of what's going on. There's a lot of changes, a lot of in progress things. And so it should be pretty interesting. It's probably been like six months since the last one. And usually that's a lot of time for growth. So we'll kind of just go through shelf to shelf and project to project and see what's all happening. One of the big changes that I made in this room was actually the watering. So I did make a dedicated video about this. In the past I was using jugs and stuff and then I converted over to sort of a sprayer and this thing works pretty good. And I still use this actually just to treat like mealybugs and pests or even fertilize because it's a little more specific as to what I'm spraying. And it sort of uh, gets a little finer mist and then I can also add whatever I want because this jug I can pour fertilizer in there, neem oil, whatever I want really. So that's, that's what I had been using for a while but then finally I decided to put in a hose because at this point, I don't know how many plants are in this collection. There's probably hundreds at this point. So trying to water it jug after jug, even filling up that sprayer I just showed you, it became too much. Like I'm constantly walking back and forth, filling it, just the act of filling it took about two minutes because you got to unscrew everything, fill it up, just took too much time. So I finally installed a straight up garden hose and this is hooked directly to a well. So at this point, watering is as easy as that. I mean, I can just go around the plant room, water things. I This has probably been the biggest quality of life improvement ever for the plant room. Like I'm having fun watering this right now. It's, it's great. I can reach everything really fast. I have an unlimited water supply. I've been keeping up with my watering a lot better. It's honestly awesome. If I were you guys and you are struggling with your watering, even if you're on something really basic, like jugs, water jugs, or even like a, a watering pot, at least upgrade to a spray or a pump spray. It's a big deal. And if you can, if you have the situation that allows it, the hose is awesome. This is like a huge upgrade for the plant room and I love it a lot. So I just want to start with that because it's, it's made my life 30 times easier, way faster and just better. But let's go look at the actual shelves here because we want to talk about plants and not garden hoses. Now, I don't know if you can actually tell in this video what has changed with these two shelves, but it's actually sort of big and not really actually, well, I guess it is big because I moved everything a little wider. This was over another two feet and I really had to like kind of do a little dance and shimmy myself in here, which wasn't the worst, but it made it tough to get the pump sprayer in here. I had a lot of plants down in this corner and I'll show you that in a second, but widening this gap and like getting rid of the unutilized space here was another big like quality of life improvement that I've done in this plant room. Here you can probably accurately see at this point what I'm talking about, this gap is much wider. If you want a point of reference here, I'll kind of stand where the shelf used to be. So the shelf was probably like, well, it's hard to hold my feet parallel like that, but it was about right here. And so that caused a lot of like issues with trying to shimmy my way in here. And before that, you can't really, obviously, maybe I'll have some historical videos I can pull up, but I highly doubt it. But there was a lot of house plants just on the floor. I moved those. Things are a lot better. Now I'm trying to get some like plank stuff growing here because there's a quite a bit of space. And then I'm going to turn this light on right up here. Not yet. I still got to get to it. But once I get that going, we'll have some good light. I even have some like Barina thing that I might set up in here. So that's a potential option. Another cool thing that I just got in the mail from Barina actually. Now they like the one video I made. So they sent me another product. It's a shelf just like this. And the best part about it is, and what I'm most excited about is it's kitted out quite nice. Like I had to put a bunch of plastic to protect the lights that when you water the upper shelves, you don't like short something out. And actually one of the plugs melted and the timer like fused to it. So there was almost a fire. I don't know how it didn't start up, but that's a whole side topic. Anyways, the cool thing is this shelf is on wheels. So I might kind of utilize this extra space to just store a shelf in here when I'm not using it. And then when I'm doing things in the plant, I can pull it out and put it more in the hallway area, this like main channel. And that will let me store a lot more plants. And I like the idea that it's mobile so I can bring it out of the plant room, but I might have to do some custom cutting. I'm not sure how tall it is. Um, I know a lot of you guys think I'm pretty tall because like the ceilings right here, but really the ceilings like 79 inches. So I'm only like five, nine. I'm really not that tall. So we'll see. Ho hopefully that shelf isn't that tall either. Cause there's some things that needs to clear to come out. So I think it'd be cool to be able to move it. I'm wanting to do more live streaming stuff and I'm still trying to understand like how I can do it effectively without like setting up this big thing every time, which I've done in the past. And so I think this uh, rolling shelf might be a possibility. So I'm looking forward to that. 
So these pothos here are sort of a, well, not really new. I started this one a long time ago and it took forever to get going, but it's, this one's actually like stuck on the plant. Oops, I just kind of pulled it loose. This one, not so much. This one has been just like growing up plastic. It was in this back corner at one point and I have moved it here. I'm hoping it attaches here. I'm not sure it's going to. I think I'm going to restart this. I did a video recently about like how to start these properly. And so I'm probably going to heed my own advice and restart this much lower down to get it good growth. Cause I mean, you can already, this one's still hard enough, but you can see these pothos leaves are quite significant. Um, I mean, they're nothing like the giant pothos and we'll go over that later, but this is your like typical golden pothos. And so here's just a much bigger version. I mean, this one I think is going to surpass this one soon because it's actually adhering and it's just getting bigger and bigger every iteration and it's doing quite good. So I think once I get a light up there or use that like standing barina light in here, really depends on how I do that shelving situation. I think these are really going to blow up. And if I do put the shelf scenario set up here where I slide it in here, there's going to be fall off from the edge of the shelf of light. And I think that'll really help like, oops, propel this upwards. This is a Escaletto that's just been vining for far too long. I don't know if you can really see it, but it's crazy. Um, we'll get to that. I just want to show you this cool pothos setup again. It's cool to see how big these pothos really get because here's some more small pothos and just, just massive. They're so much more beautiful when they get big like this because the variegation really begins to be like something wonderful. So planks are really awesome. All right, this seems to be like the really like intimate version of my uh, whole walkthrough. I usually kind of don't do these crazy angles. It's more of like a POV sort of video, but I just want to go through some more of the stuff that's going on here because there's a lot of interesting things that get skipped over a lot of updates that haven't happened in a while and i think that a lot of people ask questions and so i can reveal a lot of like updates in here without having to make dedicated videos that don't make sense there's a lot of things people want to know about that like i don't have enough footage to really make a dedicated video so enough talking about that i think that you understand like what i'm going to do here so i'll just kind of show you what's kind of going on oh wow i just got pricked by this i deserve it because of how i treated these these are the those uh uh, what are they called? Dragon fruit cactuses. So they have done, they've continuously grown. They produce cactuses that have sort of like died off and they keep producing new growth. What's crazy is, you know, when I first made this video, I didn't realize how much of a tropical cactus these really are and that they climb. You know, I just, usually I just plant things and like see what mediums things sprout and just how they progress in their different mediums. That's usually how my videos go. Like even with the lemon trees, I mean, those are long gone and dead. They died when I was on vacation, but um, these things are still alive. It's just, I haven't given them anything to climb. And so what you get are just sort of like these little like baskets, like a little hanging basket almost. Like here's like just where I put that huge lump of stuff. Like you can see that there's like this real old crusty stuff. Uh, this is in 4K, so I should be able to crop in pretty good. You should be able to see it. But there's the really old stuff that's probably what, two years now, like this guy here. And then there's still plenty of like new green stuff. So it... Again, if you don't get these climbing and get like a dedicated cactus going up, this is what they'll do long term. So, and there's mealybugs in here stuff. I gotta, I gotta treat these. I should really um, film what they look like now and then do the proper um, workload with them. And then that would be a sweet video, I think, a, a sweet update. But again, that would take a whole year, I think, to really see some positive growth. So that's the one problem with plants. Um, they just take forever to grow in certain situations. This, this little dumb pothos, Looks stupid now, but this is going to be for a really cool um, collaboration and series that we're going to be doing. And um, I'll reveal more in the future, but there's some really cool stuff cooking with this. I mean, it's probably one of the most exciting things. There's a few people I've tried to do collabs with for the longest time, but I can never think of something that actually makes sense. And this one will be really awesome. And I think like truly a good collaboration video. So more on that later. We're starting that in the next week or so. So you should start to see updates quick, but... We'll go through some of my prop boxes because I, I really love them. Um, I got some sweet weeds in here. I should be able to see this. This one has got that encephalium. The cool thing is we'll talk more about that, but I don't know if these are true encephaliums anymore or hybrids. Until they grow out and flower, I'll never know because it's hard to say. This one's actually quite narrow, but I don't know if it's from long exposure to this box. But this one's not as exciting as this one. I love this box. It is just filled to the brim with these beautiful, beautiful plants. I don't know, I just, I really like Encephalium and I really love the style of this plant. And if these are also hybrids, I have a lot of this really special hybrid. And again, you'll see later, they're starting to produce their children now, like their berries. I finally got some pollination to work. Oops, I hit the mic. I'm, um, I'm so excited about it, it's crazy. But another interesting thing about this box is, I don't know if you can see, 
like one of these guys is not the same. Well, actually, quite a few. This is a different Anthurium, but this is a, a dragon scale allocation. I bet you this corm has been in here for almost a year and a half, maybe. Like the corms just got mixed in my like potting soils and my my mediums, and I believe this one is like a, a sphagnum mix or whatever. But this thing just randomly sprouted, and later you'll see another one that sprouted, and it just cracks me up because if you aren't really into your allocations because they constantly die and and come back because they, they go into like a dormant phase and it looks like they're dead but they're not but it's a common problem with them it drives me nuts that's why i'm not a big fan of alocasia because once my basement gets cool they kind of do their dormant phase and then they i don't like it but their corms get mixed everywhere and they just sprout in random pots you'll see there's another one later this box there's nothing exciting going on here i think this is uh verde parazo or something or maybe not that one i don't know it's supposed to be variegated but i guess you gotta like heat them up or something there was some bigger pothos stuff in here, but they, I mean, they've been in here for like probably a year. Some parts have rotted, but not all the way through. So I think if you guys are ever panicked about rot, um, you'd be surprised at how slow it goes. It starts fast and then it kind of slows down. So in some instances, like um, I'll just rip this out. I can't rip this out. Uh, okay, let me just, we're going to mess everything up here. Forgive me. All right. So it might be too dark because there's not a lot of light here. This is like completely rotted out, you know, it's like gross, but there's literally roots coming out of it and this vine is coming out of the rotting thing. So you'd be surprised what like just survives if you just don't give up, never give up, never surrender. There we go. Okay. And that's like my motto with plants really, mostly because I'm lazy, but usually I just don't give up on things. I just leave it be and see what happens. And usually it like comes too and things are fine. Check this bad boy out. These are all Anthurium gracile seedlings. These have been in here for so long that they're starting to fruit. Like they're already producing berries themselves, which cracks me up. But uh, yeah, I, these need to be repotted desperately. It's just like, I got a million things to do in no time. So I finally chopped up my sad oblique. So that thing was doing poor, but I got a bunch of nodes in here. It looks like some might be rotting out, but we'll see what happens. Again, never give up, never surrender. I think we'll at least get a few growths out of here. I completely hacked the whole thing to pieces, so we'll see what happens. Um, this next one is pretty cool. I think you're going to like this. Well, this one not so much, but the next next one. I love this one, though. I got some vanilla orchids in here. They've just been living in here for two years now. Um, there's that, like, creeping oak. Whenever I need some for, like, a terrarium project, they're just kind of hanging out in here. Um, there is a little air plant in here, and I got some margravia and some string of turtles. I don't know. I'm more of, like, a bin hoarder i guess i just like keeping stuff in bins because it looks so good a lot of my stuff in my regular collection because we're not in like a true tropical environment down here it uh you know it gets its brownings its yellowings and just pests but things in the bin just they do well all right this is gonna be a challenge this is heavy some of you have noticed that my muscles disappeared because i wasn't lifting for a while so i'm already self-conscious about that but i started lifting again so Maybe I'll bulk up, we'll see. But I keep injuring my back and stuff, so I've kind of given up going ham. So this is where some of the giant Monstera stuff was. Some big old logs. Ooh, there's roots. Ooh, okay, so check this out. This is a big old log here, but we got some activation. This is awesome. Oh my gosh, another activation. I was like waiting for this one to take off. <laughs> so I saw this one weeks ago. I was been waiting for it to really get going because you know once you see this it's usually a pretty quick process but check this out this is like new to me I didn't even know we had we had activation on this side so this little chunk is really doing good I mean I, here I don't know if you can hear that but it is woody I mean there's this is some cool stuff and again some of this like rotted out but I mean just I'm not that worried about it it stopped like once things activate like the rotting seems to just like give up it's like the plant can like overtake it I got to really think about this now. This one is going to be cruising here. Um, this one, what? Why is this rooting? Wow, this one's rooting like crazy. All right, I can't rip this one out. This one already activated and I cut a chunk off. But hopefully we get some more activation because it's rooting and not rotting out. This one's been in here for probably a year. Here, I know you guys love when I do this, but check out how deep the rot is. Look at that. So it started rotting in here and then it just stopped. That's what's great. It just stops after a while. Don't know why, but yeah, we got roots kind of coming everywhere here. I'm hoping some some stuff activates. Only problem with this one is it's already activated here, 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 
here. Like, I don't know where it's going to activate next. And this is prior to me getting it. So it's kind of a, I don't know what's going to happen, but it's not rotting. So who cares? Here's a cool little anthurium doing something. A little chunk here. I don't, I don't think you can see these well, but this is going to be a pretty long winded video. And I apologize in advance if it's too long and boring, but I've never really done like a deep dive into the plant room. So that's what we're doing today. This might be an hour. In fact, I got to watch the time. But uh, yeah, this one's just, this is an anthurium from uh, Equigenera that wasn't doing so hot. But if you just chuck stuff in these bins, they seem to liven up a bit. It works, you know, I like it. And you know, I've talked about this before. I'm really sorry if that was loud. Hopefully I edit that out. But when you got an hour of footage, it doesn't tend to happen. So I'm going to just apologize. Um, something I don't, well, I do talk about it sometimes, but uh, the big cool thing about these shelves and these prop boxes is, you know, I have lights on every shelf, right? And so the lights that are beneath these prop boxes, they create quite a bit of heat, actually. So they keep these nice and warm, actually. During the daytime, they get it probably 80 degrees. So I think that plays a big role. And I don't talk about that very much because I personally don't think about it, especially when I get plants into my filming station, like outside of the plant room. It's like I'm not really, I'm in like a different frame of mind, if that makes sense. So yeah, I, mean, that's, I think that's another big factor of why I have a lot of success. Ow, oh, this is prickly. Oops, I just broke a cactus off, but there's a million of them, so. All right, I think that's probably, ooh, I forgot this was here. I kind of mixed the order up, but uh, yeah. Um, maybe we'll just address this shelf while I'm on the ground. A little easier than me getting up. It's kind of late at night. I think it's midnight. Oh, by the way, this is some cool news, interesting news. We'll see how life goes in the next four months, but... I'm having another kid, so I'm having a daughter. I don't know when the due date is. And I don't want to. I probably don't want to give out the exact due date, anyways. But so that'll be interesting. I'm really excited for that. I got a son now, and I'll have a daughter, and it's gonna be, it's gonna be crazy. We're gonna. It's gonna be a lot of kids running around. So who knows what'll happen to the channel with two children? But I've managed somehow this far, so I'm sure I'll continue to manage. Um, anyways, cool news, exciting news. I'm really excited. But I guess people who really watch my videos, they'll know about this, and they can. I guess know something fun about me. People who don't really care, they'll never find out. So whatever. Um, down here, we got some pretty cool carnivorous plants. I've done some shorts on these, some videos on these. Really easy to care for. They just kind of sit in here and do their own thing. Although I do need to address it a little bit because um, the sphagnum moss is living in here and it's really getting out of hand. But whatever, what can you do? We got another, ooh, this is kind of like pothos corner, basically. I've moved all the pothos here. This is from, uh, I think, a funeral from like almost 10 years ago. This plant is really cool. So really pretty. Same with, there's another one over there. I just, I like the funeral plants because they got some history. You kind of can remember people by it. So this is from my grandpa's funeral. And my grandma actually just passed away recently. So, um, but pretty peacefully. So it was really, like a really, uh, wasn't dramatic or traumatic. It was, it was nice. But I, obviously it never, it's never nice when people pass away. But um, so it's cool to have a plant to remember them by. I, that's why, that's what I'm getting at here is like, it's nice that these plants are like living, um, gifts from them almost, if you want to look at it that way. But this one's really pretty. It has a lot of really great variegation and, and very, uh, unique variegation. So I really like that one. Um, kind of a lot of fan, a lot of family news here. We got births and deaths and all kinds of stuff going on. This is a really, oh, there's mealybugs in here. Wow. Usually mealybugs don't find their way into my prop bins. I don't know if it's because it's a little, oh, wow, the heat or the dryness. This is really cool. I will show you this in a second. But usually pests don't really get in here. I don't know why. They just they just don't. But they are. They're in. So this is a prop box. This is probably the original prop box I ever started. Um, it's got tetrasperma from, like, my original tetrasperma that I paid, like, I think I paid 60 bucks. That was, like, my first. And that was for, like, a tetrasperma and some other plant. That was when these were, like, just, like, hitting the scene. And that was, like, right as the craze happened it's so funny because like like i thought this was like such a rare plant i was like wow this is so cool i really loved it i still love tetrasperma probably one of my top favorite plants because they can just grow so well and their leaf shape is just so beautiful so awesome and just favorite plant if you don't have a tetrasperma they're so cheap now you should get one find one they're awesome but anyways i got all kinds of stuff growing on here there's a, like a milano chrism that's been in here for at least two years now at least i mean this is probably a three-year-old propagation bin because i believe this existed before I moved. So really, really old at this point. I've just never taken anything out. Horrible of me, I know, but that's just life, you know. If they're living, they're living, you know. They're not dying in here, so whatever. 
But what I was going to say is I think this is that Parazo per, 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 Verde or something like that. I got this cutting off of some lady a long time ago, and it, like, took forever to activate, but it was been green. You see just green here, green here, green there. Well, this might be an alocasia. I'm not sure. Well, now there's this new leaf here, and it's got... Ah, oh, you will never see this because it's too dark. But maybe I can zoom in. You can see some horrible quality of it. This thing is, like, really extremely variegated. So I think because it's, like been up against the plastic top where it's getting nice and warm. These two leaves are, have a lot of variegation. Anyways, I'm just excited to see that there's some variegation going on in here. I got all kinds of, looks like mealybugs in here, but a lot of little terrarium plants are like here in the bottom somewhere. Uh, the other issue is, uh, I need to address this. Um, this one actually got quite dry, really dry recently. So maybe the dryness, look at that, there's a shingle plant. I don't know. We'll just bottle this thing up and now you'll see this in six months in the in the plant tour. I'm like just the worst person when it comes to propagation bins. There's more we'll get to that have also been existing for probably two years now. And they're just their own little thing at this point. Let me try and get this back. Ooh, okay. So yeah, I think that's it for here. I can finally stand up and show you some other really cool stuff on these next two shelves. I I've got some really stuff or some cool stuff I'm really excited about. So We'll do that. Okay, you're not gonna really see me for this and the angle might be like kind of awkward because of wide angle lenses, but I think it's more important to see much closer some of this cool stuff. Um, we'll kind of start from the left and move our way over here, but this is pretty neat. You'll get a little simple update on this guy here. This was a Jepii or Joepii or something like that. It's from Tissue Culture. Totally rotted out, but I like saved it. And there's a whole video about how to save like these like rotted plants. But again, this is another one of those just like heart of the cards here. Um, put it in the propagation stuff and just let it do its thing. And it's, uh, you might be able to see it, but well, we'll zoom in. Why not? So there it is. There's this one here and there's a tiny little piece here. And just, it's another one of those just don't give up. You'd be surprised um, what you can do if you just have some patience and some good light, you know, a lot of light and patience makes life uh, much easier. This is pretty cool. I've been kind of growing stuff in here for a while. I, I've been working on a video for that. It's a cool glass dome and I 3D printed some like sort of pot thing. Um, all my 3D printing stuff I've talked about a lot in the past. I just never got a chance to like really go crazy with what I want to go with. So whatever, that's a different topic. Let me make sure this is in focus. Cause this is the star of the show. This plant and this plant are plants I love so much. These are my Encephalium hybrids. So I once thought these were pure Encephalium but now that the flowers have come up, um, they're like an unknown hybrid and probably like I'm not exaggerating the first of its kind because um, the Encephalium is already like super uncommon in the U.S. Like I said, there's like one other guy selling some seedlings and I know where he got his from and we basically have come from the same mother plant if that makes any sense and I've given out a few and people have killed theirs so there's like so little of this in circulation. I don't know if I gave people the hybrid or just the pure one because I've had a few generations but this one is a straight up hybrid. It's so awesome. And it's making berries right now, and I, I, I love it because, like, just look at this plant. Tell me what's not to love about it. It's like a pendant-style plant, but it's still upright. It's got these insanely long leaves. Oh, my God. I love it so much. And then they got these nice little flowers that come up with the huge spadix. So cool, in my opinion. I love it, and I can't wait to get the next generation of berries and really go ham with it because it's going to be awesome. All right, you're not going to really be able to see much else from this angle. Well, actually, I'm going to show you a few things here. One, we got some little orchids, these Phalaenopsis orchids. Nothing crazy. They're just grocery store ones, but I got them to reflower. I know probably many of you have already done that, but that was the first time. You literally just put them in a cold basement. It's pretty cool. So they're doing great. I'm excited about them. Oops. Still got the palm trees back here. So I've been growing palm trees from seed. It's been awesome. Let me just pull these out without killing them. That's the only problem. Oh, my God. This, I almost killed my favorite plant, my second favorite plant. All right. Let's just go. Let's just go over this. I don't know, it's kind of a weird angle, but what can you do, right? So these guys right here, I've grown these from seed, and these were collected in Florida. Oh, <gasps> cool, this one's doing its thing now. A little, uh, looking a little gross maybe, I'm not really sure. But um, it's been really neat to try and grow these. Uh, they're almost a year now. I mean, I think I collected these in December. So we're getting pretty close to that year mark. And um, they've had their bouts of spider mites, and I think they have some right now. Oh, yeah. Ooh, look at that. That's gross. Mealybug. So... They've got mealybugs. Cool. Got to see firsthand what it looks like. Um, but yeah, a few different species. And I had these two like little nut looking guys here. Um, these like initially I didn't think would ever sprout because they were just taking their sweet time, but they've rooted. So they haven't produced like a, 
a shoot yet, but they're rooting and that's really awesome. And just this palm tree, these palm trees here have like multiple leaves at this point. I'm feeling a little bad here because they're just getting annihilated by spider mites. Spider mites love these. So if you don't want spider mites, don't collect these. But I don't know what species they are because again, I just collected them from my cousin's property and we're, none of us are like palm tree experts. But yeah, they're, they're awesome. It's been a lot of fun to try and grow some palm trees, you know? And now we pretty much just killed them on that light. Nice. Uh, well, they're okay. Well, they're not, but okay enough. I got to treat them later. Um, this is some leftovers from an experiment here. Let me just pop this up a little bit. It's hard for me to like crouch so much. Um, this is a weird angle. Let's switch over to here. Okay. Get this in focus. Beautiful. All right. So I've been growing some anthuriums in literally like aquarium gravel and it's been working pretty well. This one is also being grown in aquarium gravel. I did have the aquarium gravel like sort of crash. So like all of a sudden, all of the roots just like went soggy, like really rapidly. Well, at least it seemed like it. I don't know what happened, but um, so far it's been working pretty good. Other than that, um, this is what I wanted to also talk about. Besides this being my favorite plant, these Friticellis, these Anthurium Friticelli, and forgive me if I'm butchering its name, but they're awesome. All right, so this plant is also one of my favorite plants. It's really cheap. I shouldn't say really cheap because that's like a very subjective thing. But as far as like getting odd anthuriums you can't get in a grocery store or like a garden center, I think it's pretty cheap. I think you can pick these up for like 20, 25 bucks. It's just, oh, wow, I just ripped the flower right off. That's sad. Whoops. I thought, eh, well, whatever. Um, you saw it here live, folks. Uh, anyways, just a beautiful plant. Look at these nice long pendant leaves. It's really bushy and it's a really fast grower. I seriously love this. It did have some spider mites at one point in time, but they've um, since been like gone, which I got to treat them because if that other guy back there has them, this will have them soon. And th these are spider mite magnets and they actually get this really hideous look. It almost looks like a, some sort of disease. I, too small for camera, but I mean, look at the size of this leaf. I mean, look at that. Compared to my arm, look how weird my arm looks in this wide angle. Pfft, how stupid. Um, anyways, like that's some length right there. So here, maybe like a cross section. I don't know. Either way, you can get an idea. It's like the size of my torso. And another neat thing is I finally got some fertilization here. Um, there's some berries starting to form on this bad boy. It's got me extremely excited because um, I don't know what I crossed them with. Might be this guy here, and that would be awesome. I would love to like keep making these wacky hybrids because it's fun. And I don't know what a hybrid would look like between this long, lengthy guy and this more upright guy. Who knows? I think it'd be neat, but we'll see. It could have... Um, they could have just selfed. I'm not sure. This is a weird angle too. And we'll, we won't know until we get berries, but that's pretty much it for this lower part. So I think we can address the upper part at this point. And we've seen a lot of this before in the past. This was where a snail was living, but I'm pretty sure it's, uh, well, it doesn't smell. So he, maybe he's alive, but I don't think that little guy would smell anyways, but kind of died. Algae went nuts in there, whatever. Um, we'll move that over here and we'll try and go through some of these bins. This vine is everywhere. It's kind of something I got to chop up here and make a video about, but this, these guys crashed. It was terrible. I had a lot of cool, oh wow, this is where the scissors, I've been looking for this for seriously ever. I've been sitting up here, my goodness. I don't open these up very often. So let me turn this a little bit so you can kind of get an idea of what's in here. But yeah, I let this dry out significantly, dry, like dry at one point and it's kind of recovering. I'll say goodbye to that week, but still it's really, oh, it's drying out already again. These things are just sucking water up. Yeah, like look at this, it's just bone dry. But I got a whole lot of seedlings in here. These are Wildenauii. And you know, spider mites honestly might've gotten in here. I don't know, they're looking really funky. I did fertilize them at one point, so they're kind of coming back, but things were not looking good in here at one point, but they're looking a little better. I can see they're just dry, so dry, oh my gosh. Um, I got to water these again, but yeah, I got some seedlings in here. I thought, I don't know, this basement has been really warm this last like month. What the heck? We got some problems here. Oh, there we go. So it's really drying out quick, I think, and that's a problem. So I'm going to have to use my trusty hose, but yeah, a lot of seedlings in here. A lot of anthurium seedlings. They've been in there for maybe a year or two. I don't know. We'll put the scissors back up there so we lose it again. This is the cool bin. This is my favorite bin. This has been here for, gosh, two years. I think I made a, a video about this bin. I was like, I'm going to re repot everything and show you guys. Here, let me just show you the lid. There's like all kinds of weird orange crap growing on it. This one might be drying out too, so I really need to take a look because there's a lot of cool stuff in here. Okay. It's definitely drying out, but oh my God. 
What in the what in the world, hey? Look at this. I don't even know if you can see what's in here. Ooh, this is like bad. There's a lot of like there's a lot of rot. No, um some like terrarium plant kissed its butt goodbye. I mean it's like not looking hot, you know. Yucky. I just cleaned this, but um I think I put too much water in at one point. Cause it's still pretty wet. But things just do things in here. I mean there is um I think this might be Milano Chrism or uh not Milano Chrism. What's the Glorios? Uh there's like a queen or dark queen or dark lord as well um some little margravia some begonias there was a really cool terrarium plant in here and i think it pretty much said see you later um this is uh, uh i forget that guy's name like some burl marks something i forget i don't know but uh there's all kinds of weird things in here but that terrarium plant i love so much is gone so that's not good i might have to find a living piece amongst this mess i don't know but yeah, this is why you don't leave things go for too long. But, you know, I did this just to teach you guys a lesson, you know. It was intentional. Don't leave your propagation bins go forever. Um, I'll show you the snail infested one next. So, I just got to move some glass around. Whoopsie. All right, so this one's pretty cool. This one is infested with snails. And they have eaten so much, so much. It's like the golden corral in here for them. Holy moly. Also, I don't know what happened in here. Some interesting things have happened, but you can see there's a pretty big anthurium in here. And this one looks like really nice. So, I mean, it's chewed up. Don't get me wrong. But there's also some very interesting um, phenomenons. I will call it that going on in here. You can see the pit of death in this area. This used to be all little seedlings. They're still here, but the snails have just decimated the seedlings. Everybody that survived is like snail resistant, I would say. But um, there's some more of the, those uh, hybrids I talked about here, um, the Encephalium hybrids, but there's this really special one in here. It's like all dark green, which is surprising because usually they're more blue. So we might have a different variant, which is very interesting and neat, but yeah. The snails really killed a lot in here. Look, you can see one of these little... I mean, you can't see them, but they're everywhere in here. And they ate everything. So again, I left things too long. A lot of algae in here. It's really gross, actually. This one's been like this for over a year at, at this point. So again, do as I say, not as I do. And that is don't leave your propagation bins go forever. Um, speaking of propagation bins that went forever, here's another set that have been going on for years. So we'll just go over this right away too. I think I just put algae in the mustache. Still learning how to operate this thing. Anyways, uh, <laughs> this is another interesting bin. And you'll see some more cool stuff. I want to do dedicated videos on this, but it's just like life is chaos, you know. There's always something going on. There's a lot of sphagnum moss in here. Um, there's a monstera in here. This is a monstera. It's kind of drying out it looks like. But uh, there's, oh, geez, I don't know what half this stuff is anymore. There's jade plants living in here, not doing so hot. I kind of let all these dry out. There's a little, like, cupri, I believe they call it. I don't know. Um, there's just weird stuff in here. I want to show you some cooler things, but they're, like, so entangled. Um, I thought there was some sort of allocation here, but it looks like just a monstera and some moss. This one's not as fun as I thought it was going to be, so. Again, I needed to address all these bins, but it's like, find some time, you know. All right, next up, this one might be, oh, this one's a little better. Actually, this one's really interesting. So this bin has been alive for so long. We've got some sort of alocasia in here. I want to say this is that, like, oh, what is that? Philippines, like, king or something? Uh, I forget his name. There's a there's a alocasia named after him, but I think that's what this one is. I thought I lost all these, but I guess there was a corm in here, so that's that's cool. I'm happy. There's Margravia in here, a lot of golden pothos, a lot of... uh. And Ethereum seedlings that have just been in here for way too long. Um, oh, there's even some pink piper. You can't really see it well, but there's a piper in here. Very cool. Um, there's This is the thing I wanted to show you, though, besides all the pathos and crawlers. There's ferns growing in here, okay? Now, these ferns are not something I planted in here. They legitimately, like, did their whole spore to... I forget what you call the little... There's a phase. Ferns have phases. They're very interesting. It has done all that in here and become a full full fern. So there's like 
some good bacteria in here allowing them to like do what they need to do which is crazy I, I don't know how they did it but oh god there's some not so hot it's a mess it's a mess take care of your propagation bins guys use this as a wake-up call don't sit on them like i do especially not for years that's insane all right last propagation bin and look at that it comes with free escapees all right they're like oh this is going to be hard to open okay this will be a cool like reveal i guess let's uh how do i do this we got uh shingle plants everywhere um a lot of like what do they call that like philodendron in brazil and stuff um moss there are some tetrasperma in here some god i don't know there's a lot of things going on in here we're just going to keep that closed for another year just kidding i should get to it um but yeah i'm like just crunching whatever whatever didn't fall back in there i just think it looks cool with these uh we got these cool like shingle plants growing on the ceiling of it that's that's something they're like adhering to plastic that means there's so much filth in this bin over years of like algae like growing on the top drying out dying that it's like created a substrate on the plastic and these things were able to go up there so that's crazy but anyways let's go look at this next part of the shelf all right here we are so we're looking at this guy these guys here these are my only like succulents that i own at this point just contained to the shelf nothing crazy nothing rare just ones that i've fancied over time i've got this little like copper spoons i believe they're calling they called they're just now like these really nice trees I, I i enjoy this i think this is a really cool plant in my opinion once it gets older actually i think all succulents are really cool when they get some age on them because they get this uh more grown out appearance i like it it's fun I, oops we almost broke it that would have been sad Here's the COVID plant. So this plant was in my office throughout all of COVID. I'm still zooming on it. And it, I, there's a dedicated video about it, but it was like practically dead because it sat in the office for almost like, I think almost two years with no water. But I'm really bringing it back to life now. It's like plumping up awesomely. It was doing poor in the soil, but now that I got it in this like aquarium substrate, oh my God, is it really doing good. Um, there's some cactuses back here. Let's see if we can like get those in focus here. I'm not going to dig them out because I'm just going to get pricked. This is from like an 80-year-old or a 60-year-old cactus, I believe. This piece broke off. So it's got some like history to it, some age. It's from a very special place. Um, this is a pineapple plant. Uh, something cool that you probably don't know about pineapple plants is they're bromeliads. These are like, they're the same plants as like those little like cool things you put in like frog cages or you see even in grocery stores. So that's neat. I'm trying to grow a pineapple. I can't get at the fruit, but we'll try some stuff. Um, let's look at some other sections here. Just got some snake plants. I don't know why they're like crisping up like this. It's crazy that it's even still alive. It's like just pure paper at this point. But um, this is a plant I truly like a lot. I always forget its name, but it's like this like bulbous thing. But it's really gotten big in my care. And it's creating like a crown. So I, I think it's fun. I've got some little donkey tails. or I don't know what it's called, but it's cool. But I think that pretty much sums up this shelf. There's nothing really that amazing going on here. These are really typical plants. Well... There's a nice aloe back there, but again, I'm pulling it out is too much. All right, so at this point, we're going to address this entire side of the room. There is a lot going on here, and we'll I'll reposition the camera in a second here, but I just want to give you an idea of like what it looks like from further away. This shelf, this thing's honestly just packed full of cool stuff, so we should definitely get to it. All right, so this shelf is going to be really hard to address. I really do want to like pull off certain plants and just show you how cool they are because there's some pretty big stuff going on at this point. Um, something that I guess I didn't really foresee in the future was this idea that these plants are just going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And they really have. Um, some of these like philodendrons in here are just getting so massive. I don't even know where to put them. I've considered just like taking the shelf out, putting them on the floor and just like growing them all up the wall. I don't know. We're not quite at that point yet, but they're big. I mean, they're really starting to get some like size to them. I mean, like just look at this guy here. I've had this plant. Oops, we ripped it. I think we're going to be hearing a lot of that. Um, I wish the lighting was better in here. All right, I sort of updated the light. It's not a tremendous amount better, but I think we can get a little more light on these plants. It's like severely blinding, but what can we do? Um, I forget what this one is called. I want to say it's just like a philodendron. Like, I don't think this is a black cardinal, but you can really see that some of the size on this is really getting there. I mean, just look at this thing. I'm And here, this is like the cool fishing hack. If you're a fisherman, you know, 
all you do is hold the plant out far and it looks bigger than it really is. But even like right next to my body, you can see we've got some size on this bad boy. I mean, there's some, some size. I've had this one for a while, so that's probably why it's pretty big. But there's some other plants in this collection that I haven't had that long that have truly just like exploded. This is that Burl Marks. Um, this one's variegated, so only some of them, it's kind of like unstable. But you can just see this is massive. Again, this is next to my body. This is like, I'm in the plant and it's huge. If I do the cool like Instagram fishing hack up with my like soy face or whatever, like you can really see uh, that it just it looks huge. And it is, it's a really big plant. It's got some nice variegation, but nothing to write home about. It's not, I need to cut it and train it, but that's too much. So that kind of just chills there on the floor. I've kind of evolved to put things on the floor at this point because they have gotten a little too big. Um, we'll try and pull, this is a, this is like a mealybug farm at this point. I swear, these like, I think they call these like allogama or something. I got another one. Mealybugs love these things. You can see it's caked. We'll take care of that later. But they, they love that. If you don't want mealybugs, don't get that plant. Um, look at this poor sap. I feel bad for him, but whatever. Uh, we'll look at this guy next. This plant I have a lot of problems with. This is the pasta wanza or something or something like that. It, it does great. It's a big crawler. It's got some, some good girth growing here. There's quite a bit there, and there's actually two in this pot, so it looks a little fuller. Um, it just They all look overlit. I'm like frying stuff in here. I don't think you even can comprehend because you can't see it. And once I like deal with the uh, over or the exposure compensation, you can't tell, but there's like three sets of lights under here and they're all pretty decent wads. They're all Barina lights, but one's a shop light, two are grow lights. I'm kind of testing the combination, but I'm just cooking stuff in here. And I think that's why I don't get any like rot or anything because these plants, they're never like light starved. In fact, I think I'm damaging them most of the time. Um, here's another pretty cool plant. I can see it's already like reverting in size. I forget the name of this one. Here it is. Something by pin splash. That could be the wrong tag. Um, a little dry, but I think this really needs to climb. I notice every time it gets leggy like this, it wants to sort of just fall over. Or like get, it starts to get real little, but this was one of the really cool leaves. Again, up next to my body so you can truly get some size reference. It's, it's, a, it's getting big. Some of them I'm not even gonna be able to get out of there. It's just too much. There's, and I'll put the camera and we'll pan over here at a different point. But there's some huge um, velvet and uh, philodendrons that are just going nuts on the back wall. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different stuff in here. Again, here's another one of those pasta wands or pasta zanum, I think. Pasta zanum, I think, is the proper word. Um, here's another plant I love. This is a one of my like, again, one of my like top 10 recommendations. I talked about Tetrasperma, how much I love Tetrasperma. I love Philodendron Plumania. It is so beautiful. Um, it has these like great frills along the edge. Comes with a mealybug or two. What is that? Dead fungus gnat. Almost looked like a thrip. I haven't really had thrips in my collection yet, so um, I should knock on wood or thank the Lord. But yeah, it's just a really pretty plant. And this, again, we're talking pretty big here. I mean, this is on my body, I'm not doing the cool Instagram. When I do that, it looks insane. Look at this bad boy, oh my God. Another crawler, we're getting pretty girthy here too. I managed to pull another one out. Um, here's a smaller one, this was a subset of this one, so this one's not quite as big as you can see, but we're getting there. This one looks pretty good too. I, I love Plumania. one of my top favorites. There's mealybugs here, I gotta just kill them. All right, dead snail shell, that's interesting. All right, so yeah, this one's pretty cool. I'm trying to think what else I can really yank out of here. Um, it takes a lot to really organize this. I have one plant that I want to show you. Let me put some of these back, though. We don't want to get too buck wild here where I can't uh, continue this uh, tour. So let me return some of these to their spots, and we'll just continue on. It's almost like a plant tour video. But yeah, you can see how, like, look at the height on these guys. I mean, come on. They're not going to fit on the shelf much longer. Oh, someone asked how the Birkin was. Someone watched one of my Birkin videos. Oh, we almost lost something there. So the original, like, mom, like, just straight up rotted out at one point. Oh, look at this. This is gross. Ugh. Just, like, coming apart. Oh. Look at that. You saw it here first. Gross. We'll have to sweep that up later. But luckily, I had offshoots that are doing just fine. Again, 
Um, still do, kind of doing its thing. I don't know. It's cool. It's a fun plant. Uh, what else we got here? This is that 6969. I think these were like TC at one point. Got this from a really cool guy. Um, really coming in. Oops, wrong, wrong spot. I mean, look at this. Isn't this beautiful? I don't know if I'm even in focus here. Wouldn't that be sad if this whole time I was out? I've got this like absolutely blinding light. All right, I think it's in focus. It's about as good as it's going to get. Um, I want to say it's like that 69, 68, 6 or whatever. Uh, it just has a really pretty shape. When you overlight them, they do get a, sort of a stripey pattern to them. Had me freaked out for a little bit, but I mean, look at, look at this one. Tell me that is not something special. That is really something. Again, next to my body, you can see it's pretty cool. This one, I, like I said, I think it's TC um, only because a lot of times the TC plants, there's already like 40 plantlets in there. So when it got potted up, it just had a million plants and there is a million plants. In it. Yeah, here it is, 69686. Really cool plant, really recommend it. Problem is it vines a lot. I wish I could stop things from vining because it spreads too fast, but it's really cool. I, the, the leaf shape is really unique and it likes to fall onto the floor apparently. Yeah. Well, that's gonna fall off probably like mid thing. Anyways, for the sake of time, we'll do one more plant off the shelf and then I'm just gonna bring the camera in here so you can really see what's going on because up close, it's pretty cool. But this is the one plant I really, oh, two plants. I'm gonna show you two plants, okay? One of my top favorite plants right here. I say that about pretty much every plant because I do love them all, but I don't wanna break this one because it's so precious. I love it. I grew this from such a little baby. Someone traded, either sent it to me for free or traded me, I forget. Um, but I love it. This is a, uh, what do you even call this one? How can I blank on my, this is my favorite plant. I don't even know what it's called. Billy Eddie Eye, there it is. I used to call these like Billite, but I was corrected and they're Billy Eddie Eye. This is the newest leaf coming in, pretty big. Here's my head. Again, we'll do that cool like Instagram thing. Like, wow, look at my cool plant, yeah. Like, <laughs> let's fake it till we make it. But yeah, it's big. I mean, it's, it's truly getting there. I mean, it's not big like they can get. These can probably get like three times the size, but from my little baby plant that I had, it's really, really gotten places. I mean, this, look at some of these leaves, beautiful. This was like kind of, in my opinion, the poor man's spirit of sancti at the time. But I think this is probably almost on par in price at this point. But again, I love this plant. It's really something. I want to show you another one that I really love that is really something as well. Uh, it's kind of tangled in here. How do I get in here without showing my underwear? That's not good. All right, here we go. I'm taking big risks here, fam. There is a lot of plants that could break at any moment. Oof. Look. Oh, see, we almost lost a lot of things. Look at this beauty. This is my silver sword. Again, next to my body. No Instagram, like, fishing, fisherman's fake photo here. This thing suddenly blew up. It got really wide. They used to be real narrow like this, and it really felt like a silver sword, you know? But now we're getting that real wide appearance and there's still these beautiful silvery leaves. Look at this. We got another massive one coming in. It just doesn't seem to be slowing down. And I actually chopped this one off a different one, which is down here. And we'll see kind of when we do another pan shot. But when we do like the, for Instagram or maybe for the thumbnail, like, oh my gosh, the thumbnail. You know, that everyone opens their mouth. Or actually, I shouldn't say that because it seems like all the big guys like Mr. Beast are now doing the closed mouth teeth AB testing or whatever. But anyways. This thing is just something special, isn't it? Oh, I love it. Maybe I'll leave these off while I show you the next part here because it's, uh, um, well, I don't even know how I'm gonna do that now. I've sort of built a wall here. I'm sort of surrounded. There's another interesting one here. Um, it just makes these big blades. Getting too big. I got a Maui eye back there. I've got, let me just show you. All right, so at this point, I do want to show you some more like close-ups. Like this is something I really always loved, and this is my little like corner. This is that tetrasperma I talked about, and if you look way up here, you can see it's like just gone insane. I mean, it's truly like just grown all the way up there towards the window. It's taken over this back corner. I've got Hoyas back here. There's the little silver sword which that original one came from. It's that guy right there. I got all kinds of stuff growing in here, but yeah, you can see that the shelf is like pretty much hitting its limit. There's uh, just so many big plants and you can start to see the velvet stuff back there. Let me move this a little bit. It might shake, so I, I apologize. 
Um, I can't really even see this either. But you can see in the back, there's a big splendid. That one I need to get like on a, a wall. It's back there or something. It's it just, it's not getting any bigger because it's not climbing anymore and it's just getting jammed against the top. Not good. But then here's my Glorios. Again, look at the size of this. Let me just get in here so you can sort of see it. Now, this is a, a feat of engineering here for me to get in here because it's really something. But if you could see this big old leaf, it's still hardening off. Oh, let me try and get in here more. Look at the size of this leaf. <laughs> look at this. And this one too. It's just insane. Uh-oh. I don't want it to rip because it's like my first like really good leaf. But you can see them on the wall there. They're just like, I don't know. They're really something. And then let's move over a little more here. Because I got so many plants. This is what I'm talking about, guys. This is like problematic at this point. Like we are, we're just everywhere. There's no room. This is the warning that I never got about collecting plants is like, they get big. But it's worth it because it's freaking awesome. You can see back there is a Meowiei. Look at that guy way back there. Really cool finger-like leaves. This is like that, like, oh, I want to say golden dragon. It's doing some weird stuff where it's like very, uh, looks like it needs nitrogen. And then the little sap spots are dark. It's, it's weird. This is that odd philodendron. I've featured this one in like one of my like weird philodendron videos. But it just creates these beautiful blades. Really something. I mean, look at the size of that blade. Really cool. All right, just to give you some perspective as to where we're at. So we're looking at this wall. We're going to go to that Anthurium wall, but I want to show you this. This was going to be a big grow tent. I'm going to turn into a terrarium. I said this almost a year ago. I uh, haven't got to it yet. Life is crazy, but we're going to build it eventually. But just kind of showing you what's back there. We're going to go focus next though, on this like Anthurium shelf right up here. And that's these guys. There's some Monstera and some other interesting stuff here. But that this is going to be probably my favorite shelf. Well, they're all my favorite shelf, but let's go check it out. All right, so we're going to start with this lower shelf. and I'm just going to give you a brief like look at everything so you can kind of get an idea of what we're going to go over here a lot of really neat things make sure it's in focus i don't know if you can already see back in there but we'll zoom in a little more there are flowers everywhere which is really cool but let's just uh, start i guess with me showing you what is all going on down here because again there is a lot so there's a lot to cover on this one here um it's actually quite tough because there's again my biggest problem right now is there's so many plants and now it's not a complaint because i love it every time i come in here there's like something going on but when it comes to like making a video about it it's not the easiest thing um here's a i guess we'll start with this little sneak peek here i've been trying to uh kill these monsteras so one i've been watering like almost every day and the other one i haven't watered for like a month and you can see the problem is they're both alive i mean this one's looking pretty sad because it hasn't been watered but um, I'm, I was trying to discover like how people kill their monsters cause I hear about it and I just can't seem to kill it. So I had to figure that out, but that was for an experiment, but I can't really make a video cause it didn't, what I wanted to happen didn't happen. Um, I, I mean, I wanted one of them to die basically. So you could see what I'm getting at. This is a cool monster mint. This was sent to me from Danilo. He's like a long-term plant friend. Haven't heard from him from a couple weeks ago. There's a big old mealybug or a couple months actually, but I'm like raising this for him. I've been doing some uh, uh, like propagation stuff. This is an awfully white leaf, Phil. I'm a little nervous. Hopefully it greens up. Ay. If this stays this white, this is going to be one crazy mint leaf. It looks like it already has fenestrations, so that's sick. I mean, to maintain fenestrations on your like first physical cut is like really something. So that, geez, that was scary. Um, that would be awesome if it does what I think it's going to do. Uh, here's my Thai constellation. I got this bad boy set up for success here. Um, it's looking pretty good. I really like this newest leaf. The There's a lot of variegation in this stem here, so I think we have good chances for something cool. I got this thing set up for success in the sense that it's like really pushed up against here, so we should get some roots. But it's slowed down a little bit on its growth, so we'll see what happens. But yeah, now you can sort of see all these anthuriums a little better here. Um, here's another, I guess... Eh, I don't know, these are seed grown. These are uh, awesome uh, bird nest anthurium. I, I love bird nest anthurium because just look at that. That's beautiful. Here's another variety, different variety. You can see the leaves have a totally different texture. Again, ooh, is that rot? There's some rot on some of these. Eh, whatever, it's fine. These things are like indestructible, so whatever. Not worried about it. 
But you can see there's a lot of bird nest stuff in here. This one's pretty cool. This is from my more recent Equigenera order, which was like, I don't know, last winter. So we have had these for almost a year now. Look at like the, like, it's so, not erect. That's not the word. I'm, yeah, I guess that's the word I'm looking for. Like for being how long it is, we're talking like, again, two feet. Yeah, it holds the leaves up perfectly. I can't believe that. It is really an awesome plant. A little bigger than I expected, but it's cool. I like it. It's like really, I think this would just look really cool like in a giant terrarium, which is where a lot of these plants are going to end up going. So a big problem with uh, growing so many plants is it's like, what do you do with them? Well, that's what that big roll tent is that I showed you. This is a beast, an absolute beast. I haven't touched this for such a long time. This thing was the one that keeps dividing. I've made dedicated videos about this plant because like there's a lot of dead leaves on it, but uh, we'll do some live cleaning. Ooh, that, that looks kind of cool. Rip that right off. But it's a mess. That's it, the biggest problem with this one is it's just a mess. I can see some babies died. They like kill themselves because they are so tangled in here. Um, I know <laughs> I'm, I almost like just raged for a second there, but like when I showed this thing off in the past, there was a lot of people like, it's a TC plant. That's why it's like doing, it's like spreading, which that stuff drives me crazy. Cause it's like, so like ill, ill informed. There's a bunch of people who have plants like this that were long before. I don't even know if they're TC and crystalline. That's what this is. Anthurium crystalline at, at this point. But like back then they really weren't. And like, there's a lot of people with this plant just like, the, it's something like they use it like it's derogatory, which it's not. TC plants are awesome. But anyways, this growth is like something that people have seen on some of their anthuriums. They get going in this like really like stress growth or something where I wish you could see in there, but there is just head on head on head in here. There's like tons of different growth points. It is not a typical anthurium where you just have like your one new um, leaf, one new flower, like it goes wild. But the problem is it kills itself. But here you can see one of those like alocasia. This is a black velvet al alocasia. I haven't seen a living black velvet al alocasia in here for two years. So this is a corm that fell in that like I have like my rotting mix I'm starting to call it now because it's just like everything and anything gets dumped back in there and then you find these little surprises but this is just I wish you could see this better and we can make you see it better here look at this crap I mean this is just like just a ball of growth it is nuts I mean the cool thing is though it's finally getting some actual big leaves that aren't so deformed I was having a heck of an issue in the past I mean this one's deformed but um some are getting better so I'm 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 encouraged by that because we're getting some like actual growth. Like this new leaf is looking really nice, but I, this is like my first anthurium ever. I traded for a small cutting and I love it. It has like a lot of sentimental value because it's my first and it's just a really nice plant. It's really bushy and I enjoy that. So um, there's a lot of other anthuriums in here. I don't think I'm going to pull them all out because they're nothing like super exciting. I mean, they're just anthuriums. This is a nice little um, super bum. I got this for like 15 bucks in Georgia, but it's like a multi-plant pot. So it's really full. Um, I do like these like more bird nest style ones, as you can see this guy, this is interesting. So I like to show plants that I've had for a while because you get to see a little bit of history here. So like, see these big leaves that are starting to die. Oh, well, they almost look like spider mite damage. I like the way they're speckled. I'm sorry that the lighting's so poor. I, I didn't think this through. Hopefully I can bump it up in post-processing but these big leaves on the outside these are all what were grown like in equigenera in the cloud forest these like really like crunchy like they're not they're not well they are crunchy but these really compressed leaves you can see here they're really small these are all grown under these lights so i'm giving it too much light is my thought because it doesn't really need to like, expand out um all my plants i think get way too much light but i don't know i'm too afraid to go less Here's one of my favorite plants, Anthurium gracile. These bad boys flower and turn, create berries like crazy. I love this plant so much. It was the first plant I grew from seed and I've just been in love with it ever since. I have a million of them. I love them. They're just so cool. You should see them in like a hanging basket situation. They really can be cool. I, I love them. Um, let's move over a little bit because I think we're kind of getting to a point where we can put some of these plants back and uh, Move to another cooler section with more awesome plants. Ooh, we almost lost that that guy here. Ooh, again, this is a problem with plants that keep getting bigger. They just take up more and more space. I don't even know how I had these on here. All right, so we got that guy. Last is our mint, Monstera mint. 
Again, I think this is gonna be an incredible leaf. I'm really excited because the person who got it for me eventually will get this plant because I'm just like raising it for him. And I think it's gonna be really awesome. So I'm excited for him. Um, but let's uh, move over and see some more plants. All right, I'm not sure how to get in here good without like looking goofy, but whatever. This is really cool here. I don't know how well you can see it. This is a Monstera dubia and I got it growing up my stand here and it's like adhered. I mean, I taped it down here first and it really stuck great and now it's just climbing. It had a little bit of a mealybug issue which I think slowed the growth, but this next leaf seriously looks huge. And I think by the time it's up here, we'll be getting some big stuff and maybe by the top it's fenestrating. That's the, that's the dream at least. But we'll see, that's a, kind of an only time will tell sort of thing. Here's another little nice anthurium that I like. It's got mealybugs on it. They really like these crevices. It drives me nuts. Whatever, it's still a little more compact, which is what I like. I have another version in here, which you'll see that's very similar in like leaf style, but it's just massive. Again, some of these plants get bigger than I expected. Um, here's some Cebu Blue I had growing. Um, I screwed up. Here you can really see the, this is a great, all my screw ups are really great lessons for you guys. That's why I don't mind them. So it was adhering really nice to this pole, okay? And it's really stuck on there, it's doing great. And these leaves are getting big. I mean, look at the size of some of these leaves. This is Cebu Blue and it's big. I mean, we're talking like face sized leaves, you know? But then it stopped and it started to hang and suddenly the leaves are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. This next one, absolutely abysmal. So this is why you gotta keep these sort of plants climbing. As soon as they start hanging, they revert back to that whole like runner. And it makes a big difference in like how your plants look. So climbing plants, get them climbing. It makes a difference. Um, I don't even know how we're going to address this shelf because it's just big and my knees are honestly about to explode. I can't squat very well. Um, this was a uh, Vietiae King Anthurium. I was a little nervous. It was like one of the, like, there's a lot of hybrids of these going around, especially Equigenera sells a bunch of variants and they don't get as long, but it looks like it's starting to finally get some length to it. Um, earlier before it wasn't getting that, those longer leaves, but I think it's finally getting there. I would love to see this get like two, three feet, but very, very nice anthurium. This is an anthurium I wanted for so long. Um, it's not growing the best. It's actually so slow. Um, not looking the best, but it was a lot smaller. Uh, what is this? Clarinervium or whatever. I hope to get berries from this because it's really cool. Um, here's one of my doc block ones. I think this is Dreamweaver and um, one other like red one. This is one of those like red anthuriums that everyone loves. I've had these for a while. You can see how beautiful the leaves are. They're very dark compared to some of these like greener ones here. Hopefully you can see a pretty good difference. They're, I can see why people like them. We do have some berries forming on this one. So I successfully pollinated it with what? I don't know because you can see there's flowers everywhere. There is a bigger one I have and we, we'll try and get to it. There's a lot of little anthuriums in here. I'm not gonna really, why not, right? This is a tour after all. This one needs to be repotted desperately. This is one of those, uh, Grocery store pterodactyl with something else mixed in. It's some hybrid, but there's, I got some big old berries starting to form here. So I'm really excited, but it's like about to snap off. So we're, we're going to set this aside and actually fix that because I don't want to lose those berries. There's a good chance. Oh, ah, my knees. There's a good chance. Uh, I see. Him. I'm just going to sit up like this because it hurts. There's anyways. <clears throat> There's a good chance that the berries might be something cool because I don't know if that one selfs or not, but if you can see all these flowers here, I've really been like trying to spread pollen everywhere. I don't care what I get because I'm not going to sell them. I want to grow them out and see. So I'm just like mixing, 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 you know. Um, this is a Forgetii. It's pretty nice. This is an Echogenera one. It's finally doing pretty good. Again, we got a lot of berries here. I probably won't be able to make that out, but they're, they're forming. Again, who knows what. We do a lot of just like cowboy um, breeding at this point where I'm just like sticking anything with anything. It's like the wild west here. Ooh, we just crunched that one up nicely. This is another one of those doc block hybrids. There was actually two in the pot that I got. So I've been trying to cross them, but the timing is just never right. And I haven't saved the pollen and this big one just, I don't know. I struggle with this big bad boy, but you can see it's got some pretty nice leaves. They're really pretty. And there's just like a gracile growing in here too for why. I don't know, it just is. Oof, but yeah, I wanna get that one a little healthier because not doing so hot. Um, this guy was doing terrible at one point, oh God. But then it sort of greened up again. 
but you can see all these old yellow leaves. Flowers everywhere, never can get the berries to stay. This one finally looks like it's gonna make some berries, but I have, I have doubts. Um, this is what I did wanna show you though. This beautiful, beautiful uh, Anthurium Luxurian, it's actually doing okay in my care. I'm a little nervous now because it did flower and like, every time these big Anthuriums flower, they seem to just die on me because they put so much energy into their flowers. Um, I have no idea if I pollinated it properly. It looks like I see one little berry here, but it's just one of my nicer, bigger Anthuriums. The texture is really nice. And it's cool to see like I'm successfully growing it here. I don't know, I like it. You can almost like ASMR this thing because it sounds pretty cool. Oh, what else we got here? This is another Forgetii. Well, when I got them from Equigenera, there was many in the same pot, so I just separated them. Sometimes you get lucky with their plants because they're selling so much that they're a little sloppy and they just give you extra ones. Here's another Forgetii. Some of these are white stripes and some are regular. This one's got a big old batch of seeds starting to berries starting to form here. You might be able to see just the weight of it. This one's quite girthy as well, and there are like berries starting to pop. I had one other one at this point. Forgot to water everything, it dried out, and that was it. I've really been trying to keep this one nice and wet. I don't want to lose it. They're kind of finicky. They'll just abandon that flower like, like that if you screw up. Here's another nice plant that I have. This is a Magnificum white stripe. And you know, traditionally Magnificum do so poor in my collection. But we actually got a sizable leaf, which is really something here. I mean, you can't quite tell, but it's big. The only sad thing is, here's the sad thing. There was, it was producing a nice, beautiful leaf here, and I broke it off. Whatever. I mean, they'll grow a new one. So I'm not super sad, but it just sucks to kill your stuff when they're trying so hard. And it kind of sets these big guys back because the big guys, they take a long time to produce... Uh, to produce these leaves you know they work really hard so i i feel bad when i break them off because of that this is an, another per, whoa, almost died another personal favorite here i believe this is wilden howie eye you know not a lot of people have this one it's not super rare it's just, i don't think people like it but it has these really thick leaves i mean they're thick like rubber reminds me of a rubber tree and this one is really awesome however it's not flowering like i expected it to it flowered once and ever since then it stopped which is sad because I want to try and grow some more. I do have some seedlings up there, but again, what a nice plant. This would be a fantastic house plant. I don't know why these are neglected. Even like I think garden centers should carry these because look at this. You can get this nice upright anthurium and it's just, it's awesome. It's very hardy. By far probably the most hardy anthurium I have. But yeah, um, anthuriums are doing pretty good. You know, like I said, I got a lot of stuff flowering now. I've got a lot of, uh, whoopsie. A lot of uh, things going on and I'm really really enjoying just not the chaos but just how much stuff is doing things and with the hose it's really easy to water now and just like I said all these flowers popping up all this pollen all these opportunities to finally start making hybrids because I've been kind of chit-chatting about making hybrids forever but never been able to really pull the trigger because I just haven't had the what I need, you know, here's a cool anthurium leaf. Look at this. This one produces leaves way bigger than I expected. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, I'll show you this quick. So this is one that wasn't doing so hot from Equigenera. I think in my unboxing, you could see the roots were all rotted. I've just been growing this one in sphagnum moss this whole time. I wonder if we can like separate it. Oh yeah, we can. Cause there's no holes. Well, there is holes, but they, okay. Maybe this wasn't a great idea, but for education purposes, look at that. It's filling it out pretty good. Little, little wet in there. I probably should fix that, but not bad. There's a flower on it, though. That's what's cool. Maybe I can hybridize this with something. Who knows? But again, this is another bird nest. Almost a lot like this guy, but just slightly different. So it's kind of cool. I should probably repot it. There's some other random little anthuriums in here, but they're not like, not that they're not noteworthy, but they're just... We're just not going to dig them out because it's quite some effort. Again, the problem with all these plants is I just don't know where to go with all of them. They're so entangled. It's a problem, but I guess I need to get a greenhouse or something eventually. I don't know when that'll ever happen, but 
we can dream, right? But yeah, I think that's pretty much it for these Anthuriums here. They're, they're all doing their thing. They're all doing pretty good. Flower, I'm waiting for this to flower because you can add this and make some pretty cool hybrids as well. And eventually I'm gonna do another big Anthurium order. But that's after I clear some room out by um, doing the big terrarium that I wanna build. Cause I will plant a lot of these in that one grow room that I showed you just to like, I don't know, I gotta plant something in there and that'll make room for some other stuff. But I wanna say, oh, there's some cool anthuriums back here. They get some huge leaves, like two to three feet long. Um, I, I don't know, I'll show them somehow, but I think that's a lot, or that's pretty much it for this whole shelf here. There's not too much more going on. Somehow I have this big empty patch, so maybe I should, I don't know, I'm probably crunching something, but yeah, they're all flowering and doing awesome. And maybe in another year, we'll finally have some of these hybrids grown out to where we can actually see what they look like. Cause it takes some time. That's the one bad thing about plants is it really is a long-term hobby, but let's go to the upper shelf here because there's a lot of really cool stuff up there. All right, we must be at probably an hour at this point, And I'm, I guess I can apologize already because you've been watching for like way too long. But if you have, you get to see the really cool stuff and kind of some more important, not important, but more interesting sneak peeks because you've been watching. Most people who haven't made it this far are gonna miss out on this. But um, there was some like cool controversial videos I made a little while back about Thai constellations. And so I did buy some Thai constellations. I sent some, these are all tissue culture Thai constellations. I sent some directly to a lab to be tested. I will re reveal those results in a, a very, what well, I think is gonna be a funny sketch that I have planned. I, I've been waiting to, I don't want to like count my chickens, count my chicken, count my eggs, count my chicken, yeah, count my chickens before the eggs hatch. But I also, I bought a total of 10 TC culture, um, Monstera Tycons or whatever. And so two, I had to have blended up to be tested. So there's, they're dead obviously, because that's the only way to really test them is like chop them up and culture them for um, Pythium or Pythium. That's what I was calling it, but I guess it's Pythium. So I had them tested. Again, I'll re reveal those results in the future. But I've been growing out all these um, Tycons. You know, I deflasted them months and months ago. I tried a bunch of different things. They're in the, like the dirtiest soil I can even, I can ever like imagine. Again, that like rotting mix I talk about. It's like where all my dead plants, I just dump them back in the same bin and reuse the soil because it gets expensive if you're constantly throwing dirt out. So I, I literally fried these things under light. I put them in super humid, like no air circulation conditions. I like beat the ever loving crap out of these Thai constellations and all eight that I deflasted are still alive. So they could get the super Pythium rot or Pythium rot like any, any day now. I don't know. It's been, God, I want to say it's been like three months at this point and they're still alive. So I know people are having problems with it and I, I want to f figure out what that issue is. I'm starting to guess that people just aren't giving them enough light. Well, we'll get, there's a whole, I'm gonna have a whole video dedicated to this. And not only is it just revealing the results of everything and stuff that is gonna be cool, there's some further like knowledge that you guys are gonna gain that I also gained thanks to this really awesome guy who reached out to me. It, this wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for him. His name was Shane, he was really cool and really sort of set this stuff in motion. I didn't really know how to like really do what I wanted to do. But anyways, the results are gonna be interesting. Um, the results of this entire video are going to be more interesting to you guys and like what that means for you guys. Um, I'm going to reveal some really cool resources to you. So enough about that. Again, if you've been watching this whole time, you got a pretty good sneak peek. You can see these are at least alive. Again, you won't know the results until I do the big reveal, which will be funny. But I really have been putting these things through like hell and back. Um, and they're alive. I mean, they're alive. Some of them look a little curled up and a little dry, but again, from from what I've done to them, they're doing pretty good. But that's enough about those. Let's talk about some cool stuff. This right here, this is a Bulbophyllum orchid. And this is my favorite like family of orchids or species of orchids. I don't. I f always forget the tree of the like you know the family phylum species, all that kind of thing. I always forget how that works. But um, this thing will get massive if I do well, and this is going to go in that big grow box. These things can get like we're talking like this long like four feet long, They're just insane. And the bulbs can be like the size of like a softball. And like, I just, I love that they're so ridiculously large. Um, this was actually pretty pricey because there's not a lot of these um, going around because there's just not a lot of people who collect them. They're kind of weird, but it's growing for me. I mean, this was once like a, oops, I almost broke it. We gotta be careful. I really like this. I really want to see it get big. And there's really only one growth right now. So 
I don't want to ruin it, but this one grew out for me, this big guy here. It was like nothing when it arrived in the mail. And there's another growth, which is really good because that means it's doing okay in my collection. I, I've killed a lot of orchids. Um, there used to be a shoe box of orchid tags, but this one is doing okay. And I, I hope it continues. Um, it does have some like weird um, brown spots and stuff. Maybe there were spider mites chewing on it or something. Maybe it has a disease. Let's hope not because I love this thing, but it's it's alive and that's good. It's been here for a couple months now, so I don't know. Ooh, it's scary, but I really like that one. Um, I guess next up is probably the, oops, the Spirit of Sancti. So I've had this for quite some time now too. Um, it's sort of reverting a little bit in size. I wanna say I need to add some like potting soil up above so these like roots feel like they're doing something. I think it's gotten a little too wiggly at this point, and so it's like not continuing in size. I have been like cooking this one to death as well. Again, the problem with my s collection is I overlight them a lot, and so it's starting to get a little cooked, but um, it's nice and narrow. It's looking really pretty. I, the Spirit of Sancti is really awesome, and now you can get this bad boy for like, I think like 80 bucks on Equigenera. So um, thankfully TC has like got a lot of these plants that we all wanted and loved way down in price i mean even the thai constellation you know there's people who disagree with me but um there was always talk that they're like impossible to grow and you know the price will never come down but they were literally in some like grocery store in wisconsin for 40 bucks i mean each one of these i think was like 10 bucks in a flask so it's just it'll just get cheaper and cheaper which is good and same with the spirit of sancti i'm sure some some at some point maybe this year or next year you'll probably be able to get this stuff for like 40 bucks i mean that's what's so awesome about tissue culture you can get access to these awesome plants hopefully mine's still alive by then but if not then i can get one for 40 bucks i don't know i kind of cooked it a little bit but i think it's doing okay i'm gonna move the whole camera down a little more we're kind of almost done with this tour at this point just some seedlings and then some stuff behind me and yeah i'm just if you guys have made it this far through this whole thing i'm thankful i always appreciate you guys who watch this stuff same with the comments i mean I don't know if you guys ever read the comments, but there's so much valuable information in the comments. It's insane. So many people like to, I know this is a tangent, but this is pretty important to me because I just, I notice it and I love it. People will reveal like such good information. Like I did some product review and you know, I can only do so much with product reviews. Like I only have so many products and it was like the, this Barina light that's back here. But you know, there's been this like mother, I forget the brand name, mother something, maybe just mother. They had a similar vertical light, you know, and it was like $200, you know, and people, I never bought it and they never sent it to me. So I, I don't have any experience with it, but for 200 bucks, you would think you'd get a good light, but I guess it has horrific problems with falling over. It's on like a little stand like this, but like, I could never tell you that because I don't have the light, but people in the comments like chimed in people who have bought even the Barina light and the mother um, light, they were able to like tell you like the pros and cons of them. I thought that was awesome. I released a video about a tour in DC of a botanical garden. A few people came in with some really awesome information about just how there's like another federal greenhouse that's like close by, but even bigger that is like federally owned. So if you take a cutting from that place, you're really in trouble. But this, the, the amount of knowledgeable people that come in the comments is really cool. So um, if you ever watch my videos, take the time to go through the comments. There's some really good gems in there. Great advice. Just really awesome. I want to thank everyone for always I'm like adding to my videos with those comments. It makes a big difference. I think it really helps people out. And I guess, yeah, I just, at this point, this is just a thank you to all the people who watch and who take the time to comment, leave stories, all kinds of stuff. I love it. It's really good. So um, thanks for doing all that stuff. But uh, yeah, I'll move the camera at this point and we will look at some seedlings. All right, I'm not sure like what the angle is gonna look like again. This like might distort me, but here is a ton of seedlings that I have been growing out for a long time. Finally, like, so I've really struggled with Magnificum. I've always had a really big problem with getting them to like really hold leaves and look okay. And I don't know if they've just adapted through like what survived and what didn't, but I'm finally getting some decent, like regular Magnificum plants growing out from seed. Like they're actually starting to finally look halfway decent. I know they're still small, but if you would have seen like the amount I've lost at a different phase and just haven't looked good, you would think this is amazing. I mean, look at this guy here. Look at the size of this leaf. I mean, it's laughable compared to some of the ones I got from Equigenera. But these are all seed grown and like from my own environment with my like crappy um, soil. I think that might be one of the issues. But they've either adapted or like this was the survival of the fittest. So 
I'm just glad to see that there's some real life going on now because I did a major repot a year ago and I lost a lot. Like it really like triggered something and it was bad. So these guys are actually doing good and it's just nice to see. So if you've been following since that big repot, you can kind of see like where they've like managed to go. Back here is a bunch of like little anthurium seedlings. I think Wilden Aoi. These are Gracile. Again, I love Gracile. These are some berries I got to deal with. They'll like produce a million berries. I mean, look at, look how little this plant is and it's already flowered. Like phew, there's like five different flowers on this thing. They're so quick to flower, it's insane. Again, one of my favorite plants. I mean, look at this beautiful leaf. Tell me that's not awesome. Over here, I got some more of those uh, um, bird nest ones that I've grown from seed. They're all doing pretty good. Again, bird nest and theorem, they just grow. You know, they don't mind much. They just do their thing. But that's pretty much it for this shelf. Behind you is like pretty much the last part. And we might be able to just do this live. So I just dang near kicked it over twice. This is the big giant pothos, and you can see I've totally screwed up. So I will just show you from this angle, because why not? Let's get this in focus. Though. I think it's good. So this thing fell off the pole. Um, I tried repotting it, and oh, crap. Um, it hit that other thing. Uh, but the problem is I didn't do a very good job. Oh, and I just wrecked that leaf. That new leaf is toast. Well, I guess you learn things and you don't. But you can see it's quickly reverting in size. This leaf was one of the more recent ones. Here, let me just change this. All right, let's see if you can see a little better. That's eh, a little better. This is the corner of shame. I have a really neglected monstera back there, but whatever. But my point is, because this thing fell off the pole when I repotted it and it never really adhered, it's been getting smaller ever since. And I'll have dedicated videos to this, but um, really, again, I want to show you this because it's really important to see what happens when these plants are not climbing and adhering. They start to revert. I mean, even if they have like some support, it doesn't always work the best compared to like dedicated like attachment to a pole or a plank but it's still plenty big but i definitely need to address it because this is just not good this is not good for it it's going to break it's not good um so yeah this is kind of a reminder to make sure your plants are really well adhered well guys that pretty much sums up this whole tour i hope you enjoyed it it was very long-winded and we talked about a lot but i hope you got like a little bit of bit of like a better insight into what's all occurring in the grow room what's even growing in the grow room where everything is because most of my videos are like on a white background of like close up so it's like hard to kind of get an idea of like what's actually going on so i know it was really long and you had to go through some boring parts but if you made it this far i really appreciate it again always thankful for your comments always thankful for your support a lot of people that are continuously commenting or continuously saying things and things, I remember you guys. I, I know who the people, like the star fans are, if you want to call. I, I don't want to say fan because it's not like you're a fan, but the, I want to say more like contributor because usually the people that I see a lot are usually giving me cool stories or cool advice. And again, I really appreciate all that. The comment section is always awesome. And I think we hit like 200K pretty recently. Um, I don't really, the subscriber count's not a big deal to me, but again, it's a, always a good time to remember um, that there's people that have subscribed and supported your channel. So I appreciate it always. I hope you enjoyed this big, long, uh, long wind tour. Hopefully there was some funny stuff. Maybe not. I don't know. It's like almost one in the morning and I got work at, or I got to be up at six. So this, this will be an interesting night, but, um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And again, I really enjoy everything that you guys have given to this channel through either plants, trading comments, views, everything. It's always been awesome. And I appreciate it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I think I've said it about 30 times now, but as always, may your plants go strong and healthy. I'll see you next time.